What's up, people? It's KR Zero. How are you guys doing? Uh, look. So, <laughs> shoot. Let me get hurry to make those videos that I've been making, playing on making. But ah, uh, I keep I keep seeing all this stuff in freaking media on YouTube and other things, and it just makes no sense. And I have to talk about it. So, first, let's, let's talk about let's talk about. Aaron Sloan, aka the balloon, the balloon pop guy, aka Ninja Turtle. Uh, so this, this, this dumb, this dumb guy is out here constantly. Well, he's just making a fool of himself on on so many different platforms. Uh, he was on the MTR. He was on uh, Mediocre Tutorials and Reviews, or MTR, for short. Um, trying to tell his story because he made a GoFundMe saying that he was fired, and he's just trying to raise money for his humanitarian effort. Uh, something that I've been preach pretty much. Uh, discovered that that was false. Um, also, the queen of accountability is on the case. Um, if you don't know about uh, the queen of accountability, uh, the accountability queen, whatever you want to call her, she she is someone who, if you look on her Facebook, she will, um, if anybody tries to do something stupid, um, either for clout or tries to say something uh, false about some other person, she holds them accountable. She does her research. She does her due diligence. And she, um, <laughs> I mean, she really gets all the facts and information about somebody as quickly as possible. And, you know, I have to give her credit for it. Um, but all these people are on it. MTR has come out saying that uh, he realized he um he got it wrong he's taking his l he's holding himself accountable which is a good thing i mean i personally did watch mtr back in uh 2000 or 2001 I, I i was subscribed to his channel and all that stuff i unsubscribed um relatively recently like i believe last year because i felt like he was going too far into the red pill but uh, you know, he is seeking truth, and when I say going too far into the red pill, I mean like you know, just constantly going after women over and over and over again. And I get it, there's a few women who do need to be held accountable for some of their actions. Uh, however, at the same time, it just felt like he was just going so far into it and not like giving. Uh, a little bit of grace you know what I mean uh, not giving an inch to them to his uh, beliefs possibly being a little bit off like it felt like an overgeneralization of what we, uh, women doing certain things in the wrong way and I didn't like that <laughs> uh, because you know <clears throat> I see it from both I see it from all different sides and nine times out of ten when you look into these YouTube spaces when you you know you hear about these uh, people having these when you hear about the men versus women argument and women versus men argument it tends to go so one-sided so quickly it's not even funny and i, I really hate that because there is more there's more nuance to everything when it comes to um the relationships between men and women um than you think uh, there's more nuances. Not all women are detestable human beings, and not all men are detestable human beings. Or, you know, holier than thou type individuals. Either version. It just, you can't. It, it, there's, there's a huge gray area in that whole situation and I feel like people just tend to skip over that. However, this Aaron Sloan guy who calls himself, well, I don't want to call him that because that's a, 
that's a detriment to like uh, a particular suit a particular Marvel superhero that I am never gonna uh, mm -mm. he can't he can't call himself that anyways uh, but this Aaron Sloan guy he's just been coming up trying to say trying to save face after I've been preached brought up there's uh that whole like MTR thing this is what I really want to uh, look at for this episode. <laughs> um, the whole MTR thing. Uh, that he's trying to say, uh, that he's trying to say is uh, false and all that stuff. MTR trying to um, uh, realizing that you know, dude lied to him. So the whole MTR thing that uh, Aaron is now trying to like say is ruining his whole thing, making him look bad and all that stuff. Well, it stems from the fact that M uh, MTR literally just wanted to get some receipts, some proof of what he, what, he, what the job was, uh, the job that he got fired from. I just want to prove some receipts because in actuality there's you know his, this ex of Aaron's has been coming out saying a whole bunch of stuff uh, he claims that 500 women uh, call uh, or 500 people people 500 people basically came uh, called in to his job and got him fired nobody a good portion of people don't know what his job was um, according to you know, we don't know everything. <laughs> I mean, not that many people look up so many things about a guy on the internet. Like, he didn't even say the name of the company that he worked for on the Bloom Pop dating game. Dating thing. He didn't say, he didn't say much. So, like, it was understood that we only have it from the ex-girlfriend, supposedly. However... Uh, not everybody's going to go into deep see the thing. Uh, so in order for, in order for MTR to like really continue running with the story to kind of be on this man's side, he wanted to have just that little bit of proof. That's all you need. Like, Hey, what was the name of the company? But Aaron didn't want to give it. And this is where, I'm, this is where I'm going to like show you the, the thing. Okay. So. Here we go. One day at 9.02 p.m., he called me out of nowhere. I missed that call. Notifications on my Instagram are obviously off. I only see things when I actually check my Instagram. He called me. I didn't see it. He said, damn, bro, that's crazy, man. You got me looking insane now and painted me out the wrong way. And I'm thinking to myself, when I finally saw this, I'm like, what are you talking about? What do you mean painted you out the wrong way? I've been going above and beyond to let you recount your story. I hold you accountable when you say weird things like tracking the woman in the car or, you know, when you're throwing money in the club we have these conversations yeah and okay so you have these conversations uh and you, then you see these videos about this guy you know um pretty much throwing money at the club in the club uh he's talk. they had that conversation where he's um what's the word i'm looking for where he's uh uh, he was talking about his ex-girlfriend. They were reacting to his ex-girlfriend's uh, TikToks where she was like saying how this guy tracked her, put his phone in her car. They've only been, granted, this girl and him were only together for about two weeks. And he's sitting there putting a phone in this girl's car, uh, extra phone in this girl's car so he can track the phone and figure out wherever she goes. That's stalking, bro. That's stalking, bro. And like... <clears throat> there was so many other things. Well, let's get back to it, all right? But what you tell to me is you're trying to be better. These are in private conversations. You're trying to be better. You're trying to learn. You're looking for advice. 
You're looking for mentorship. There is nothing that I've done up to this point that demonstrates me attempting to make you look crazy. This sounds more like someone biting the hand that is giving them a platform. He follows up and he says, man, bro, this got me stressing hard. Man, I thought you was my friend. Now, how are you going to call somebody your friend? <laughs> look, how are you going to call somebody your friend when you just met them? I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, it took me a minute before, like, I have, uh, people I, I've met on Discord, who I kind of hang out with, who I, who I talk to for a second, some people I actually do hang out with, some people I actually do want to hang out with, uh, hang out with eventually, uh, because they live in all the different states, however, like, it took me a good minute before I started considering my Discord friends, instead of just people I know on Discord. Get what I'm saying? I've gotten used to them. We, we were talking, we found some common ground and all that stuff. So there's that. But just beating somebody for the first time and jumping on their uh, podcast or streaming or their streams and all that stuff doesn't immediately make you a friend. So I, I, I don't get what he was going on with that one. But let's continue. Friend, I wrote this morning, just woke up. Hit me when you get this. I then follow a reply to when he's message about him stressing. I'm like, not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, it just hit me. I'm like, whatever you think could probably just be solved in a quick audio conversation. So we have a audio conversation from 8.27 a.m. to 8.40. And I also got another question. Why are you, you a grown ass man, blowing up some, blowing up some man's phone? Or, uh, or Discord or whatever. Blowing up this man's thing uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning. You trying to figure this shit out as quickly as possible. Good Lord, let people wake up, man. You wanted to get, he wanted to get in on this as quickly as possible. I mean, good Lord. But let's continue. Five. Within this conversation, we talk about many different things. But the main thing that I talked about within this conversation is I said, we only know about you and your story due to the GoFundMe, where you said you were fired from the place that you work. Where did you work? What is the name of the business? What is the name of the company? I need you to provide that information because if you don't, you scammed on GoFundMe. This is now a legal issue and I cannot support a liar. I cannot support a thief. I cannot. Yeah, you see, <laughs> MCR is actually asking a good question. Like, hey, he, he's saying something that we all need to know. Like. What is going on? Like, what is this place that you used to work at? If we can get that uh, uh, reason as to why you got fired, we if we can figure out where the place you worked at, we can understand why you got fired, okay? Hopefully it was the reason as to why uh, you posted in your uh, GoFundMe. And therefore, you know, people donating to you on your GoFundMe makes sense. However, if you're not, I mean, if you're not giving us that little bit of receipt, that small little thing that we need to know, then of course we can't, I, your, your story isn't corroborated. It makes sense. It, it makes sense. Cause there's too many people getting on GoFundMe, making these, uh, crazy, make, making these GoFundMe saying that this happened, all that stuff happened, and it turns out that they were just trying to scam people for a whole bunch of money. I mean, look at the pink sauce lady. <laughs> look at uh, the brick face lady. Uh, a few other people do. Like, you keep hearing all of these, like, scamming stories on GoFundMe, and then people have to, like, end up, you know, getting their money back, or some people never get their money back because of these GoFundMe scams people you know pulling at your heartstrings in order to uh, make a whole fat load of money it's, it's just ridiculous but then he gets on another uh, uh, YouTubers stream and all that stuff he does the interview with this other group he did like two interviews with this particular person um, called 
called Kite uh, ZZ. Kites, I guess. <laughs> Which, I don't really pay attention to their platform. I don't really pay attention to a whole bunch of different people's platforms. Uh, looks like they have like 24.7 subscribers. Uh, but he got on their video. Oh, uh, no, 14 hours ago. And initially when they made their video, I think it said something completely out. Aaron the Plumber speaks out, but it said Weapon X. Well, he gets on this platform. And he wants to do a reaction video on um, MTR's thing. And he just continuously makes himself look bad. I mean, look at this. Uh, hold on. Let me get to the right one. Alright, so here's this. To jump at the opportunity to show me the evidence. But this is not how you're choosing to move. Therefore, I sense deception. I told you. Okay. Um, one thing, and again, we're neutral. I gotta keep stressing it. I don't know why I gotta keep saying it, but there's always gonna be somebody that hears what I'm saying and they immediately, you're defending. No, in our interview, where you told us about your birthday weekend coming up, and you told us that you were turn you were having your birthday weekend come and this is after they've you know edited the original like uh live stream so well let's continue and you have already reserved your spot and you were going to go out and celebrate now yes. that interview came out before the gofundme thing even was established so when we saw the clip of Abba and Preach and we saw MTR say you were using the GoFundMe money, using the GoFundMe money, you're a scammer, it clicked with us because we were like, no, he was already mentioning this birthday situation way before the GoFundMe even became a thing. Yeah, but this is what, okay, so, yeah, we're talking about this whole birthday party thing, all right? He celebrated his birthday. Before supposedly before the GoFundMe came out, right? Well, he was trying to celebrate his birthday. He had already made plans to celebrate his birthday before the GoFundMe thing happened. And then he posted the GoFundMe, and then his birthday all of a sudden happened, and he's throwing money. Look, I get it. Uh, and somebody else brought this up. Like Duke, Duke the Don brought this up. I get it. You, when, when it's your birthday, right? You go to celebrate. You want to celebrate your birthday. You have plans for your birthday. Everything. You you, you have this certain plan. Uh, I know I've had plenty of birthdays where I was like, hey, I want to go to a strip club. Or, hey, I want to go out and drink and all that stuff and do all this crazy stuff. Or I want to go out to, like, uh, Atlanta, do some things in Atlanta. Whatever, right? But if I were, if it was me and I had gotten fired from my job, I would change my birthday plans a little bit, you know? Like, especially if I got a GoFundMe going on, I would change my birthday plans a little bit. I wouldn't go and go crazy for my birthday. It's called responsibility for a reason. You would, you would go and, you know, kind of rein it in a little bit. Okay, so it's my birthday. I really want to celebrate my birthday. Let, uh, but you know, I don't have a job. Uh, I may have money in the bank, but my money in the bank needs to like support me until I can find a new job. So, you know, I'm gonna have to cut my budget down a little bit. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, let me just, you know, get some of my good friends to come with me, and I have like a smaller birthday, you know, instead of what I initially planned. It's called responsibility for a reason, man. Like, seriously, you go on, especially after you post your GoFundMe. I know you already had your birthday plans, but if you're posting the GoFundMe saying that you need help 
for this and that. You have to like once that GoFundMe is posted and you say that you're going that you need a little uh, help to like get through until you can find another job or do whatever you're planning on doing your humanitarian work and all that stuff. That's when you need to be a lot less out there doing a whole bunch of stuff and like kind of rein it in a little bit. Um, but most of the stuff, most of the stuff he's talking, most of the stuff he's been doing, uh, and this is his response to this. Okay, like here's his response. But I do remember him specifically talking about his plans was he was going to celebrate his birthday and he had already had his plans and everything invested in investing. He said the amount he already put on it, put yeah. down on it. And who are you to tell a man what to do with his hard earned money? Okay, how I like to celebrate might not be how you like to celebrate. You like apples, you know, I like oranges. We have two different tastes and two different perceptions on life. Who's to say your food is better than mine? You know, I can celebrate however I choose to see fit. And, you know, you should not be judging me. You guys are all so upset with me for living my life. I'm thankful, you know, that I... Okay. Like, <laughs> bruh, the, it's not that. It's the fact that it's the perception. You have to, <laughs> you have to realize that it looks bad on you if you're... You post this GoFundMe. Yeah, you had your birthday plans in it and uh, all set and all that stuff. And this is why, you know, our community, our, the black community seems to go like. <laughs> this is why the black community seems to be a little bit off right now is because of the fact that we're so busy trying to flash. Like we have so many of us trying to flash, you know, wealth and all that stuff to the point where or flash that like they had they got money they got thousands in the bank and all that stuff trying to flat flash all that stuff and yet you don't put you don't and then you also make yourself a gofundme and it you know how you come across is important like you're gonna fuck up you you're just messed up your gofundme by doing exactly, just continuously doing what you felt like doing for your birthday. It looks bad on them. It looks bad on GoFundMe. Of course, they're gonna look at it as like, oh, well, no, no, no. Damn, let me go ahead and freeze this GoFundMe until we can get a better understanding of what's going on. At this point, it just seems like you're taking money from pe other people who are hardworking And trying to uh, live vicariously through that. And it don't work that way. This is the reason why I don't like really put money into like GoFundMe unless I know everything of what's going on. Uh, like, I, you know, I, I'll put money into a GoFundMe of people I trust. Um, which reminds me, as soon as I get a chance, I gotta send some money to uh, one of my old bosses. For his uh for his partner's uh current hospital bills. Anywho, so yeah, the and now I'm hearing like uh this man is trying to make his own he's trying to make his own YouTube channel and on he'll wait until he makes his new YouTube channel to uh uh basically post the receipts and all that stuff dude it don't work that way you look bad the best thing to do is to get yourself get your uh like explain to some of these people the receipts the the platforms that you've been on especially the ones that have a, a bigger audience right now like hey even the kites uh viewership which has like about 24.5 subscribers their fans can actually pay attention to you and all that stuff. Uh, if you give them the receipt, hey, guess what? And, and you allow them to spread that <laughs> that message. Guess what? By the time you push, post your YouTube video, your your first YouTube video, you're gonna automatically get that uh, that 
goodwill towards your good this to your YouTube channel and you speak more about what you are. Uh, mediocre mediocre tutorials and reviews, MTR. Uh his channel has about what? Way more than uh tights. Yeah, it's about 721. I hate the immediate like video, sorry. But M MTR, he has about 721,000 subscribers. Um, so, you know, Kites has 24,000, 24 to 25,000. You know, you could have easily given yourself a little bit of goodwill and people would have actually, more people would have actually heard your story, believed your story, and then um, be willing to check out more of your story with your YouTube channel. Instead, you you failed that. And you the more the more I hear you talk, the more I, I heard the uh, MTR interview, uh, Duke Don's channel, uh, the more you keep speaking, it just, the more I start realizing that you're full of shit. Like, uh, you, you just keep, <laughs> you just keep shooting yourself in the, in the foot with everything that you keep saying. Like you are saying that this, but you know, I'm not going to talk too much about the whole Aaron thing. Cause I don't want to give him any more. Like, I don't want to give him any more like attention. That's all I got to say about the whole subject about this. And if more stuff comes out, more stuff comes out. I'm not going to be the one bringing that shit. I just wanted to put my little two cents on that whole subject. But next thing I also want to talk about is um, this whole thing when it comes to like inclusivity and like TV shows and all that stuff. Look. Okay, so the reason why I'm talking about this is because of the Acolyte, uh, Star Wars, the Acolyte. Now, I've watched, I watched the first episode. I haven't watched all the episodes yet. I'm going to wait until all the episodes are out before I give it a full watch through. Uh, and I actually have, I don't have anything bad to say about it just yet because, well, again, I haven't watched the full series. So I haven't given, and one thing I do like to do is watch a full series Oh, uh, before I make my judgment on it, unless it's a series that's been, especially when it's a new show. Uh, so basically me talking about Doctor Who has nothing to do with that because I've been watching Doctor Who for a good minute. So I feel like I can bring up, talk about like an episode, especially if it was a good episode and it's a long run, longer running series. So the yeah, Acolyte is a whole different story. I... For instance, I was a huge fan of Miss Marvel. I loved the Miss Marvel TV show. <sighs> yeah, there was a couple of things that were oh, story-wise that was like, uh, but overall, I felt like so many people who were talking about it were mainly talking bad about it just because I had a female lead. A female, uh, 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 a female lead who wasn't white. And that's kind of disingenuous. I hope I'm using that word right for once. Because of the fact that, you know, Iman Vellani really portrayed the character of Kamala Khan perfectly. I mean, I remember I, I remember when Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, was first introduced in the comic books. Yes, I'm a comic book fan. And she was a huge superhero nerd. <laughs> Iman uh, Valani does a great job of portraying that in uh, Kamala Khan. And not only that, but she is real life Kamala Khan. Like, Disney literally picked the. It, Disney did the exact same thing they did when they casted uh, Robert Downing Jr. as Iron Man, basically. But with Kamala Khan. That was the best. That was the best freaking choice because here's a well, uh, a girl who wasn't even known. She had, she did like one little uh, movie with for her school. That's it. Small little movie for her school. 
That's her only acting credit. And she automatically, somehow she got this role and it was that great. I, I, I'm going off subject right now. But anyways, so the acolyte has been out and I've been hearing so many things about how, how it kind of ruins Star Wars uh, mythology, uh, the mythos and all that stuff. And I'm like, I'm gonna, like I said, I want to give it the full run through. But the biggest issue I'm having right now about whether I, I should focus on this show is the fact that the main actress of it, uh, what's her name? Uh, the Acolyte. Hold on. And I think this is what's going to lead to the show not really getting a sequel series or whatever. Uh, uh, continuation or whatnot. It's got an 85% Rotten Tomatoes, but 3.3 out of 10 on IMDb, which is not good. But uh, the main actress of the show, Mandela uh, Steinberg. Uh, goodness gracious. The way she's been going about, like how. Okay, the issue I have with the acolyte currently is how uh, the the main actress of Amanda Steinberg, who I didn't realize also played Rue in uh, the Hunger Games, um, the way she's going about like uh, detracting the haters and all that stuff, or trying to like go about this whole little thing like making all these different like videos twerking and all that stuff um look in my honest opinion back in the day whenever there was like some like she's making all this she's making it about wokeness okay being trying to fight anti-wokeness with wokeness instead of focusing on uh trying to put push the story like give people a reason as to why the story is such a good thing. Um, all, all I hear is the the diversity, the equality, the uh, in inclusivity of the show, but I'm not hearing anything about the story. Like okay, when when Lee Jung Jae, who uh, plays Master Soul in the show, you know, uh, uh. uh a South Korean actor from who's well known for <laughs> being in uh, the main character in Squid Games. When he talks, when you see him talk about the show, it was like I was actually more interested in the show because of him, not not because of the fact that this is a male speaking, but because of the fact that he he learned English for this. He was saying he was talking about the merits of the story of the show. Which is awesome. Awesome. That's that's how you do it. That's how you as an actor or actress is what you're supposed to do. Instead of focusing on like the the DEI of the of it all, focus on the story. The story is what's gonna push. Uh focus uh, when you're talking in the interviews, focus on the story. The story is gonna is gonna be what pushes people into uh well, not pushes people, but it's going to capture people into your show. Uh, the more you have, uh, uh, the best way I can put it is the more of, the more that you have um, built a a <sighs> I'm trying to figure out exactly how to word this. 
Uh, but to me, the more you try to, uh, the more you are talking about the story, how the story feels like uh, it's a good story uh, about this and all that stuff, it, you give things about the story, the more people are going to be like encapsulated by the story. And that's the biggest thing for me. Like, if I'm going to watch a TV show, if I'm going to watch a movie or play a video game, the main focus is the main focus to me is always going to be the story. And if you don't write your story well, then I, people are going to notice it. You know, real actual good people are going to notice it. The people that you who are actually going to eat this stuff up. Okay, um, a lot of people have an issue with Final Fantasy Thirteen. Okay, I, I, I know I'm going off topic a little bit, but it's not really off topic. A lot of people hate the story, uh, hate Final Fantasy 13, mainly because of the gameplay loop, how that works, the fact that it's not nearly as free as like most of the other Final Fantasy games were. I mean, Final Fantasy 10 was basically, you know, you had to follow certain things on the map. Final Fantasy 12 had more of an open map type thing. Um, and if you think about Final Fantasy 7, even though it feels like the original Final Fantasy 7, even though it feels like you have the world open to you, you are kind of following a certain thing until like, uh, you get access to the whole world map with, you know, the, uh, the high wind and other things. You're kind of focused on this, but a lot of people hated Final Fantasy 13 because it just felt like you're going through walkways hallways and all that stuff but um the story i thought the story was somewhat good but there was a little issues with the story in my eyes of being same with final fantasy 15 oh good lord let's not even talk about chapter 13 of final fantasy 15. Whew. But final fantasy 16 oh man that story had me gripped for the entire time like <laughs> Oh, 13, 8 has a good story, even though a lot of people don't like 8 because of certain gameplay. You, what I'm trying to say is, a story, to me, a story can overcome a lot of things, okay? Uh, heck, Final, uh, uh, Power Rangers, uh, <laughs> Power Rangers Time Force was really good, in my honest opinion, that... Like, well, not Power Just Time Force, but they cop they basically copied most of uh, the story of Time Ranger. Uh, the Jap it's Japanese counterpart. What is adapt what is adapting? But that story was so good. It was worth watching, okay? It was, it was great. Uh, and me being a Kamen Rider fan. Uh, Comrade, <laughs> Comrade Ryuki had a really good story, okay? But then we had Comrade Dragonite in America, which was, uh, they had the, the American adaptation of Comrade Ryuki. It was so good. The storyline was so good that, uh, Japan saw it, was like, whoa, whoa, y'all actually did some really good stuff with this. How about we, uh, bring that over here? and dub it in Japanese and we'll still you know we'll show it to the Japanese audience and the Japanese people loved it just as much it was that good what I'm saying is the stories the story will always be better if you focus on the story and you the actor is more uh more involved in like putting these care uh this uh the story ahead of your own like uh feelings and all that stuff you can really entice the story um a lot of people currently in current days talk about like how there's so much inclusivity in this thing and diversity blah 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 blah, blah. i hate that narrative because okay like okay for instance uh because I, I want these stories to like hold on to the uh, I want these stories to be judged on the merits of the actual story, not because of some woke stuff. But, for instance, 
uh, let's look back and let's look back on certain things. One of my favorite, uh, I, I will sit here and tell you, I'm a straight guy, right? But one of my favorite, but I have two favorite gay icons, and yeah, it happens. Well, I would say more lesbian icons, but there's a reason why I would say they're very big, okay? In my eyes, vain because of the fact of how they were telling the story. For instance, back in back in 2000, I got I got hooked on all my children. I got hooked on the story of Bianca Montgomery, played by at the time Eden Regal, and Bianca Montgomery was the, the youngest daughter of Erica Kane. Well, uh, one of the main characters of the show. I mean, pretty much everybody is talking about, uh, like, all my children, basically, at one point, I think by some of my um, older family members, you know, my grandparents, my grandmas, they would call it, oh, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's the Eric Kane and the Her Many Husbands show, which basically was the whole thing. Anyways. Uh, but Bianca Montgomery, uh, Erica Kane's youngest daughter, uh, she had, they had a storyline where Bianca ended up, beca- um, uh, uh, coming out as lesbian. Now, it turns out that Agnes Nixon, the creator of the show, had wanted to put in, uh, have been wanting to put in, uh, a lesbian character, uh, a, le- a lesbian storyline in it since early on okay uh she they attempted to do it it didn't work the first time but in this case it worked because it was a coming out story that was done well it was done justice um turns out that eden regal her her sister her older sister uh, 18 years her senior um, also was a lesbian who had come out and all that stuff and even when she was uh, first introduced the idea that um, they were going to do this um, storyline she want she, you know they're originally going to say oh yeah we're going to do this uh, just don't tell anybody she initially she was like fuck that I'm going to talk to my sister she wanted to get a good account. She wanted to be able to portray this character perfectly well, per, portray the storyline, give justice to this storyline. And there's a reason why, and it was such a great storyline, how uh, um, it came about. I mean, I, for me to retell it <laughs> would just be sacrilege in my eyes, opinion, because it was that good. I sat there, watched it, heard lesbian, yeah, and granted, you know, as a male, straight male, you know, you hear lesbian, and you're like, oh, wow, uh, I want to see all this about. But, back in the, especially back in the day, but when you watch it, you're like, oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, it, it made me so, it, it was such a great, it was such a great storyline that it made me become a supporter of L- the LGBT. I was uh, I was a big supporter for a good minute. I can't support it the way it is now, but back then they that's how you do it. That's how you make that's how you uh, uh, acquire uh put people onto that side. You literally get these small little tidbits. You make small little steps. Those small little steps will make bigger waves as they go along. And the way the LGBT movement is going right now, it's trying to just, they're putting so many things out there. They're throwing so many stones into the water that it's preventing any any waves from like going. Like they'll put a stone here and then they'll put another stone right there that like stops the the waves from really forming and all that stuff, it don't make no sense. Anywho, <laughs> uh, instead of just putting the same, putting more and more rocks on the same rock and all that stuff in the same area to like 
produce more and more waves. It's hard to explain. Uh, the other like <laughs> lesbian icons that I also say um, was Willow and Tara from uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It was a slow build up. You saw how Willow went from obviously being in the guys, but or, or being into Xander mostly, and of course. Uh, Oh, God, why can't I remember his name right now? But uh, Seth Green's character in the show. Oz. Ozzy. Oh, God. Anyways. Uh, and then she met Tara, and Tara was cool and all that stuff. Tara having to be a witch and all that stuff. And then you find out that they found love for each other. And it was a decent love. And it wasn't some weird, like experimental stuff it was more like you could see how that love like uh, built up and it was a great way to build this thing now granted I get what a lot of people are trying to do in these stories and trying to immediately just set off the make it seem normal for there to be a gay person and all that stuff but there are ways for you to do that without like pushing it so hard on people and that's that's the biggest issue is that you're pushing it too hard you're making care you're changing characters too quickly to for no reason whatsoever but back to the acolyte how you but uh, i can't I, i'm not gonna continue that talk because again i wanted to have like a well written out Oh, way of bringing it up, but just me bringing it up randomly, it, it's not going to give it justice because I really want there to be some support for the trans community, some a, a lot of support for the LGBT plus community. But at the same time, the way the message is coming across right now is just not the right way, in my honest opinion. It's just not. It's doing more harm than good. In, my honest opinion and that's just my opinion i'm not saying that it's full facts and i'm not saying that i have anything against the lgbt plus community i really want everybody to succeed um but with the acolyte i feel like the biggest issue that they're doing the biggest issue especially with the main actress playing the role of osha and may is that She's out here whenever there's like <laughs> somebody having an issue with uh, the show. If the show starts looking bad and all that stuff, she's just people constantly blame all these people who are woke and all that stuff, who who are anti woke and all that stuff, <laughs> um, for their show or movie not doing well. When in actuality, and then they go after the people who saying it's are their <coughs> their show or movie is too woke or whatnot and i'm like um <coughs> instead of going about that how about putting more references on what the story is saying something like along the lines of hey yeah well you can keep saying this woke you can keep saying that but you know, if you really pay attention to what's going on in the story, hopefully, um, by the end of the show, uh, you'll understand that the story actually has some deeper meaning to it. And, and that's true. Like, if the story has merit, then you're going to, everybody's going to push more into the emphasis of the story. Um, <coughs> which is a, which is also the reason why I have an issue with streaming shows nowadays. There are some streaming shows that can pull this off with like having six to ten episodes. But, you know, um, best uh, best show uh, so far, I could say it works well with that, is uh, Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds. It's great. And I also like Discovery, but, you know, not that many people have that Discovery um, thing. But a lot of these shows, especially newer shows, that have these six to ten episode runs on these streaming sites, 
they they tend not to <laughs> like it's kind of hard to like really get into the story uh when you're doing it so like get into these characters and get into the story there's like a risk and there's a risk with all of those to be honest with you so sometimes you, the story doesn't just come across well with six to ten episodes uh, sometimes you probably need the 20 episode run or the 13 episode run the full 13 I don't know but I can tell you right now like I, I, I see a little bit of mirror to Star Trek uh, uh, Star Wars at the acolyte but again I'm not I'm gonna save my thing until uh until the final episode meanwhile <laughs> currently I just got into uh Windbreakers. And that was, show was so good. <laughs> but anyways, that's it for this video. Um, uh, that's it for this video for right now. Because I am obviously too tired and I got to be at work in a few minutes. So, as of recording this video. So, uh, until next time, you guys. Have a great day. Have a great month. Well, have a great day, week, month year you know that whole little thing and um i'll talk to you guys next time peace